In this problem, where this ball sits at the top of this hill of a height h, this is ultimately what we're solving for. This ball will roll down this hill, and it'll go through this loop, and it'll go out the other side. And we're ultimately solving for this height. So I'm going to start by setting my zero level. I'm going to say that the top of this loop will be my zero level. So this height will actually be whatever the distance is from the top of this loop to the ball. I'll call this d. The height that I'm solving for will be d plus the height of this loop, which will be 2r. So I want to plug in this d when I'm solving for my equations, and then plug it back in there at the end to find the ultimate height. So I'll start with the energy equation. I'm assuming that there's not going to be any non-conservative forces. So the energy initial is going to be equal to the energy final. I'll call this E1 and E2. The energy before E1 will be the gravitational potential energy of this ball from this zero level, which I said was at the top of this loop. So it'll be the mass of the ball times gravity times D because this is the height above the zero level. And that's it for my initial energy. The final en energy will be the kinetic energy of this ball moving it through this loop, which will be 1 half mv squared. And it'll also be the rotational energy of this ball as it's rolling through this uh, loop. So it'll be 1 half i omega squared. Now at this point, there's a lot that I don't know. I don't know this velocity, I don't know omega, which is the angular velocity, and it doesn't tell me i, but the moment of inertia for a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. So now I know i, I just have to find this velocity. So I'll look at the top here, I'll redraw this. At this point here, this ball will have gravity, it'll point down. This will be mg, but if it's just barely going through this hoop, then it'll have a very small normal force. This will be fn, and it'll be so small that I'll just say it's zero. So I'm going to use Newton's second law, f equals ma. This will be centripetal, because this is uniform circular motion. A centripetal is equal to v squared over r. So force centripetal is going to be equal to mv squared over r. We said that the only centripetal force is gravity, because normal force is zero. So it'll be mg is equal to mv squared over r. These masses will cancel. I want to multiply the r to both sides, and I'll get that v is equal to the square root of gr. So that's my answer for v. Now I just need to find omega. Well, it says that the ball rolls without slipping. What this lets me do is use one of the equations for relating this ball's tangential velocity with its rotational uh, velocity. The equation is this. It's the velocity is equal to the radius of the ball, which I'll call little r, times the angular velocity. I'm going to solve for angular velocity by dividing r to both sides, and I'll get that omega is equal to v over r. Now I'll plug this v value in there, and I'll get omega is equal to square root of g big R over little r. So now I have my omega and my v, and I can plug them to there. It'll look like this. It'll be mg d is equal to 1 half m times the square root of g big R, that's going to be squared, plus 1 half i is 2 fifths mr squared, so it'll be 2 fifths m, and this r is relating to the ball, so this will actually be little r, and not big R, because big R is for the ramp, little r will be for the radius of the ball. So this will be m little r squared. And omega is that term there. 
So I'll write that here. It'll be square root of g big R over little r. That will all be squared. Now a few things are going to cancel. The mass will cancel for all of these. And this square is going to cancel with this square root. This square root is going to cancel with that square. The r down there will be squared. And eventually it'll cancel with this r, but I'll write that before I do that. It'll be gd is equal to 1 half times g big R plus these twos will cancel. It'll be 1 fifth R squared times g big R over R squared. These R's will cancel and these G's will also cancel. It'll be D is equal to 1 half big R plus 1 fifth big R. D will be equal to when I find a common denominator, which will be 10, this will be 5 over 10 big R plus this will be 2 over 10 big R. So D will be equal to 7 tenths big R. Since we said at the beginning that the height, which is ultimately what we're looking for, is this D plus 2R, H will be equal to this D, which is 7 tenths R plus 2R. This is also going to have to have a common denominator of 10. So H will be equal to 7 tenths R plus 20 tenths R. So H will be equal to 27 over 10 times R. And that is your final answer. Thank you for watching.